What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with the SketchUp announcement video for you. So in today's video, I wanna take a look at the newest release of SketchUp that just came out. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find more information about this new release on the SketchUp blog. So you can just go to blog.sketchup.com. I will link to that in the notes down below. But I just kind of walk you, wanted to walk you through some of the changes that have been made, what they mean, things like that. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is this is the first release since SketchUp went to a subscription model. So this is the first release after they said that they were going to start adding new features in um, just whenever they came out instead of putting them out in the new release every year so I think first of all this is a good thing because there are a number of new features in here and if SketchUp's going to keep rolling out new features um, with each release as opposed to waiting until next year I think that's going to be a good thing so um, the first thing I'm going to do is I don't actually want to go through this blog post in this particular situation what I want to do instead is scroll down to the bottom and when you you get these when you look at these new release blog posts usually at the bottom there's a button for the full release notes so generally I like to go through that it's a little more technical but what it does is there's more information in here so not only is there gonna be information about the big shiny things that they're talking about there's gonna be things in here that are kind of smaller things as well that are really gonna affect your workflow so um, if you want you can click on that release notes note at the bottom of the page and there's a lot of similar information so you don't have to do that but that's what I'm gonna go through so the first thing I wanted to talk about is as we go through this there's new features in here for the export settings all right so if you read through this one basically what this means is they've added the ability to control line thickness when you export your images using a multiplier and so what that means is now you can control your line thickness when exporting especially at a higher resolution or higher dimensions and so what that means in general is previously what would happen is if you were to export an image like this one and you were ex to export it to a large um, high resolution file so if we go to file export 2d graphic so specifically there was an issue where if you exported to a PNG or an image file at a high resolution, your lines would look very thin. So like for example, let's go ahead and let's bump this up um, using our profiles function to something like three or four or something like that. So we obviously have thicker lines in here, right? So if I was to go up here to a file export 2D graphic, and I was just to export this just as a normal image and we'll go ahead and make sure our line style multiplier or scale multiplier is set to one and um, even though we had those thicker edges in here what would happen is our image would get exported and if you look at these lines even though we'd set our profiles to something thicker these edges actually still came out kind of thin and this was especially an issue on high resolution exports well now with this line multiplier if we go in here and do the same thing we click on our options there's an option in here now um, to scale up your lines so we could set our line scale multiplier to something like three and hit OK and so what that would do is that would be if we did a line scale three and clicked export and we open that image up you can see how now that image gets exported with the thicker line weights in here so it's kind of fixing something where if you tried to export an image before you wouldn't get your thick line weights that you wanted so it gives you more manual control over that so also PNG images now export with transparency and so you may be thinking that uh, that was already in there because you could always export with a background that was transparent now what this means is this is exporting images with transparent materials this will actually export images now um, not only with a transparent background but if you have a material that's transparent um, that transparency will also get exported as a part of your image so that that was what was missing before was the ability to actually export those transparent materials all right, so the next feature I want to talk about is the customizable unit settings. And so now what they've done is they've adjusted the unit settings so that you can have your lengths 
be in one unit, but then your areas and your volumes be in another unit. So instead of just being stuck with like inches um, for all of these, so if I was to open up SketchUp 2018, for example, and I was to go into my units, so if I go to tool or uh, window, model info, units, you could see how my options were, if I go to decimal, my options were inches, feet, and millimeters. And whatever I entered in here, like if I wanted to set my lengths to be in inches so that I could type these in in inches, um, that means that anything I added, the areas or anything else that's displayed in here was also going to be in inches. So you can see how this area is in square inches. Well, I don't actually use square inches for anything. And so what I would do then is I would go in here and I would change my units to feet. Well, the problem with feet is now my length was also shown in feet inside of my entity info, right? So I couldn't do inches and then feet for area and then something else for volume. Well, in SketchUp 2019, what you can do now is if we were to do the same thing, well, in SketchUp 2019, now in this new version, now if I go up to my uh, window model info and I set my units under the decimal setting, I can actually set this so that my length is displayed in inches, my area can be displayed in something else. So I'm not stuck with my area also being in, in square inches, it can be in square feet. And so what that means is now I can set this up where my lengths show up in inches, but then my areas, if I was to draw that same wall over here, is in square feet. And I can adjust what that's displayed as. So if I wanted to, I could set this so that it's in square inches as well, or square square millimeters, or whatever I want in here. So this gives you more customizability about uh, what you can do with your units inside of SketchUp. So the next one, arguably, is my favorite new function inside of this new release, and it's the invert selection function. And any of you that have used Photoshop are probably fairly familiar with this function. Basically what this, mean is this means is this allows you to swap your selection from something that's selected to selecting everything else inside of your model. So let's say for example that I was to come in here and I was to model a sphere. So if I was to stand this up, use the follow me tool, move this out of the way, And what I've done in the past as kind of an example is I've used the extension multiple offsets to offset all of these faces inside of my model, right? So, and then what I would do is I would double click in here in order to select everything and then I would hold the shift key, which puts me in add and remove selection mode and I would drag across this and then I could hit the delete key to delete this out. And this is just an example. There's a lot of other things you would do with this as well. Now, instead of having to do, hold the shift key and drag a crossing box across this, I can just do a control shift I. And what that does is that inverts my selection. So you can see how it deselects everything that I had selected and it selects everything that I didn't have selected. So now I can come in here, whoops. and do that same thing really quickly. And so that would work just like they have in their example model where you could select one thing and then hold control shift I to select everything except that object. So there's a lot of functions or a lot of things that you can do with that. I'm pretty excited about that. I will know um, the control for that is command shift I on a Mac. All right, so importing files actually solves a kind of annoying problem that SketchUp used to have. And if I open up SketchUp 2018, like for example, I have a folder in here for uh, Topo Shaper, which is an extension that allows you to import CAD files and things like that. Well, you can see how I have SketchUp files in here, but then there's also DWG files in here. And uh, so the problem with that though is there was no button down here to show every single type of thing that you could import into SketchUp in this list, right? You could select images, you could select DWG and see DWG files, you could select SketchUp files and see SketchUp files, but there was no like show all supported file types. Well now in version 2019, if I do the same thing, 
where if I open up the same folder and I click this drop down, they've added the option for all supported types. So what that means is now every single thing that you could import into a SketchUp file now shows up in that list. So instead of you having to know exactly the kind of file that you have and go looking for things, you can just select the all supported types and see everything in a folder that SketchUp will allow you to import, which I think is a very, very good thing that makes life a little bit easier. And I really like it when things make life easier. All right, so eraser tool, this is in the other option that's in the running for my favorite new thing inside of SketchUp. So if you ever, like let's go ahead and undo, and let's say for example that I have this sphere in here and I wanted to erase some things in order to make like a specific type of shape or something like that in here. Well previously what would happen is let's say I wanted to erase out some of these hidden edges along a straight line like this. Well as you hold the eraser tool like this you would accidentally click across something and as soon as you clicked across something that you didn't want it was pretty much done right like you had to let up you had to undo and you had to go back and you had to try it again and you could do that three or four different times trying to erase the right thing there's now an option in here to deselect those items without letting up on your eraser so like for example if I was coming in here and I accidentally erased out these edges now if I hold alt and control and drag my eraser across these you can see how it's actually erasing or deselecting those edges and then I can let up on that and hit erase or let up on my mouse and it'll erase out the things that I had selected. So that's kind of a very simple workflow fix, but it's something that's gonna save you a lot of time when selecting because now you don't have to like go through and select different things and then just quit if you accidentally do the wrong thing. So you can see how I can easily just deselect these with the eraser tool by holding um, Alt and Control and then let up on that. Um, on Mac, it's Alt and Command. So section planes, looking into that one, if I'm understanding that one properly, it just allows you to name your section plane after it's placed. So the little window that pops up that lets you name your section plane previously would pop up beforehand, before you actually entered that section plane. Now it seems to pop up afterward. Um, if I'm misunderstanding that one, let me know. That's just kind of a minor workflow thing, at least to me, I didn't really find that to be very clunky to begin with, um, but that is in there as a new feature. So we'll talk a little bit about send to layout in a minute and some of the other layout functions. But first I wanted to talk about this large area imports and I actually kind of need your guys help on this one. So this one I don't want to comment on too much just because I can't test it. Um, this is only available to SketchUp Pro and Studio subscription holders and I have the classic license, meaning I don't have the subscription model. I'm going to link to a forum post down below with a note from uh, one of the guys from SketchUp Bryce who talks a little bit more about this feature. The way that I understand it is you have some higher resolution options for when you're zoomed out, meaning you can add more large areas. But like I said, I will link to this forum post in the notes down below and you can go check that out and try it out yourself. And leave a comment and let me know uh, what you find about this function. All right, so this next feature inside of Layout was a bit confusing to me. Um, and the reason why is they've added the ability to make your linear dimensions align with an isometric view, which is great. Um, so you can make those align with a 3D view um, inside of layout. What they didn't tell you is how to do that inside of this release note. So um, the way that you do that is you actually go into layout and using the dimension tool, you hold the alt key and then you click just like this. And then you can adjust the way that this works so that it'll align um, you could have it in line just like this. So you can add dimensions that line up with your isometric views, which is great. So in addition, you now have the ability to add text to dimensions inside of SketchUp and you can do so without actually breaking them. So previously you would have to kind of double click inside a dimension like this and uh, basically typing something in there would break the dimension. Well now, if you wanted to add like uh, fascia, 
or something like that. Like whatever you wanted this word to be, you can type in a value after the greater than and less than signs. And as long as it's outside of the greater than and less than signs, then if this changes, so, and I don't know if this is gonna work, but you can see how if this changes, that word will stay in there. So now you have the ability to add notes inside of dimensions without breaking them. So another option in here now, and I'll just create a new sheet real quick, is, or another thing that's in here now, is now if you resize an object, so if I just draw like a simple box like this, and I have a dimension in here, and you were to change the scale of this object, so Previously, if this was linked to this object, this would adjust, right? This would adjust your length if you adjusted it in and out. But if you were to adjust this up and down, what would happen is these arms of these, um, the arms of the dimension would change length, but the actual dimension itself wouldn't move with this object. And so a lot of the time what that would end up with is you'd end up with this like way off here, even though you'd scaled an object way down and you have to come in here and kind of manually fix that. Well, now you don't have to do that. So in addition, and this is another one of those features that didn't really get talked about a whole bunch, but it's definitely in there. You can also adjust the gap between this edge and the object that you're, uh, that you're uh, trying to dimension. And so the way that you find that is you go inside your dimension style and this sizes to a very inconvenient size in here. Cause if you click and drag this down, you've actually got a function in here where you can adjust the gap. So like for example, if you wanted to adjust this gap to like a half inch or something like that, you can see how you can type in a new value to set that gap to whatever you want it to be. So that allows you to customize how far off of this object this dimension is. So just another feature for really being able to customize what things look like inside of layout. What I want to talk about now is the ability to rotate dimensions and the way that these stay aligned with your object. So maybe the best way for me to do that is I'll actually pull up layout 2018. So within layout eight, 2018, let's say that we had a box like this one and we went ahead and we dimensioned it. So we'll just add a dimension, just like this. I'm going to change this to architectural real quick. And let's say we had this dimension in here and then we rotated it kind of like this. Well now, if you were to come in here and you were kind of to dimension this off to the side, you can see how you get this weird kind of funky, like like almost distortion in here with the way that that looked. So this would kind of stay linked, but your lengths wouldn't look right. Nothing would really look right, right? So if you did any kind of rotating of those dimensions, things, whoops, things suddenly got a little bit weird if you ever tried to scale them. Well now, if we open up layout 2019, so now if we open up layout 2019, we do the same thing where we add a dimension to this box, like this, and we rotate it. Well now, if I scale this in 2019, you can see how this actually maintains the orientation that it had. So what that means is now you can come in here and you can adjust and scale these dimensions without having to basically replace them. Because as soon as you like scaled them off to the side like this, then you would kind of lose that dimension. It would get all broken. It wouldn't be aligned anymore. Nothing would really work the way that you wanted it to work. So this is a great new function for alignment and working with dimensions inside of layout, making the way that it acts just a lot more stable. There's a number of other like bug bug fixes and other things like that. This is the other reason I kind of like to uh, I kind of like to look at the release notes rather than the uh, than the blog post, just because it gives you a full list of the things they're actually doing, and it's easy to forget that a lot of the time the SketchUp guys are working in the background making a bunch of different changes. So, like for example, they've updated the Ruby version for extensions. Um, they've made other changes in here as well. I haven't really looked through these too closely, but sometimes you'll find things in here that you didn't even know were in there. So it's always worth checking the release notes, um, not just the blog posts when these new versions come out.
So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I'd love to hear what you think about these new features. Does it kind of more fit what you'd like to see from SketchUp moving forward? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.